you for joining. This is the WordPress, this is the San Antonio WordPress meetup group. We have a guest speaker, an awesome guest speaker, Wayne, right here. Look at Wayne. All right. So this is a live workshop, so I won't be able to engage with you guys. So be patient and watch the show. Okay. All right. So before we start, just want to say thanks to some of our awesome sponsors for today. Of course, we have Geekdom, WB Engine, Anderson Marketing, and of course, Wayne's website. WordPress Dev Solution. By the way, it's an awesome website. You should check it out. Okay. So thanks for all of these awesome folks. If you want to take a snapshot and maybe kind of share it in social media, give them a good, good shout out for helping us to use this facility and teach you all this awesome stuff. Feel free to do so. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. <coughs> Oops. Too fast. There you go. So that's a Geekdom's Twitter handle, and this is WP Engine because they're one of our sponsors, and of course. WP Dev Solutions for Wayne, and today's hashtag will be WordPress. So, if you learn anything awesome, new, cool stuff, and you want to tweet it, plus it, Facebook it, Instagram it, Pinterest it, feel free, feel free to do so with the hashtag. So, let me know if you're done writing it down before we move forward. So we can use your phone and take a snapshot. <laughs> okay. All right. We we get we get we awesome. All right. And WP Engine, they're still looking to hire uh, WordPress developers. They're actually from Austin. It's an amazing company. All they do, they host WordPress-based websites. Now, guess what? They have an office, maybe, what, sixth floor here at Geekdom. And they're still looking for someone who's interested to maybe troubleshoot the customer's product, right? So go to wpengine.com forward slash careers. If you're not interested, share with somebody that is interested. Maybe your neighbors, your you know, cousins and niece and uncles and grandpa, OK? So that's it. Should we all turn off the light or just leave it on like this? Let me test it real quick. See how it, how it looks if you turn off the light. What's wrong with Let's see, man. Let's see. Is it better? <laughs> Too dark. Whoa. <laughs> Too dark. How about now? Is it better now? So is it? No? OK, cool. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's go to the Meetup real quick because I'll have a few announcements on the Meetup website. OK. All right, so tomorrow at the UTSA downtown, I'm having another, go to the San Antonio online, after the dot com, go to SA Online Marketing. SA Online Marketing. Yeah, let's see. All right, there you go. Oh, you didn't join us yet. <laughs> okay, go ahead and scroll down, see if you can see all the classes uh, for tomorrow. Uh, yes, so keep going. All right, so tomorrow we have, what is this? Wednesday? Is that tomorrow? Yes. Interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, so tomorrow <laughs> there's going to be a class on how to use your blogging to get uh, you know targeted traffic, how to build a list, and how to put your brand out there. So that's going to be tomorrow at the Venture Point at the Dominion, the Dominion Ridge, the, the new location for Venture Point. This is going to be right there, 7 p.m. Scroll down. Then on Thursday, I'm going to do a session on YouTube for Business, downtown at the UTSA, the Durango building, 6 p.m. Then Friday, we'll talk about link building, especially for SEO. If you want to know how to link build to get some sort of, you know, traffic and exposure, that's going to be on Friday, back at the Medical Venture Point. Then Saturday, I'm doing a, a seminar from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. on how to set up a website on WordPress. So if you know anybody, that wants to build a site for the business, it's a, a beginner's class, so when they come in, they're gonna learn everything about the WordPress from the back end, okay? Every single thing. So by the time they leave, the website is built. So that's gonna be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Dominion Venture Point. They can go ahead and click more meetings. Then on Monday, I'm gonna do a session on Google AdWords. Anybody here use Google AdWords? And wants to know how to Google AdWords? Nobody's interested? Come on, you gotta make money. Because <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry, Google. So Google AdWords is a basic class on how to, because they made a lot of changes, so I'm going to show you how to invest wisely and how to get proper click and how to convert when somebody hits your website. So that's on Monday. It is going to be the Dominion again at the Venture Point. On Tuesday, I'm having uh, Rod Greensidge and myself do a class. It's a hands-on to show you how to use, use Facebook advertising. So make sure you have some money because you're all going to actually do the actual campaign. So that's on Tuesday. Same thing back at the Dominion. Then Wednesday, we have WordPress Wednesday with Corey Ashton. So make sure you watch all those videos. We're going to come to the session, discuss about it. After one hour, if you have any issues with WordPress, we'll go ahead and fix it for you, OK? So there you go, Wayne. The floor is yours. Take awesome. it off.
Well, thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is a continuation, sort of, from our last meetup we had last month, um, where we kind of talked a little bit about building a really basic plugin for WordPress. <coughs> so uh, there were some questions, and there were some people who wanted to go a little bit deeper. So um, we're going to be talking about WordPress hooks. Um, and let's just dive right in. If you need the presentation, it's already in the meetup. Just go to more files and you can download the presentation. Cool. So we're just going to talk about a what is a WordPress hook. Um, they're essentially bits of code that are used to trigger a change or add new functionality to other pieces of code. Um, we're going to go really deep into all of this stuff. Um, this hopefully will be you know, the, the full time, because uh, we'll be really doing some digging and answering questions, because this part can be pretty difficult. And um, if you aren't too familiar with PHP, this is where you can kind of get hung up, because you can understand how to use hooks, but a lot of times hooks require you to um, either uh, know PHP or be able to grab a snippet somewhere. But there are a lot of places that you can search around and find um, WordPress snippets uh, that are really helpful. <clears throat> so hooks in WordPress are broken up into two terms. There's action hooks and there are filter hooks. Starting off with action hooks. An action hook is a way of connecting to a specific time in the initialization of the WordPress core functions and adding, adding to it that function or adding additional functionality. So that's like a whole bunch of stuff that probably doesn't mean a lot, <laughs> the definition. Um, but basically, and we're going to look at this, there's kind of a, a timeline of when WordPress um, So this is the plugin API hooks reference, and it's going to give you two different sections, the filter reference and the action reference. And I'm actually going to go to the action reference first. 
And the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I, I wanna talk a little bit about that timeline that we just discussed. So what this does is it breaks down, these are the things that, and the order of things that start to run whenever a WordPress site is starting up and you go to a new page. Um, it basically, uh, this first one, it's MU plugins underscore loaded. So that means that after uh, must use plugins are loaded, this, that, that's where that section in the timeline, um, this little MU plugins loaded will fire. And then it basically goes down, it registers your post types, it loads your plugins, it sets up your theme. All of this stuff is done pretty instantaneous, so you don't really see it happening. But um, with a little bit more training and a little bit more um, actually digging into code, you can know exactly when you want to connect into some things. Um, for example, something that you probably will recognize is this WP NQ scripts. And if, if any of you have uh, properly put CSS or JavaScript into your WordPress uh, development, you're going to connect to this WP NQ scripts. So with an action hook, what you're saying is, I want to be able to add my CSS and my JavaScript this, at the same time that WordPress is loading all the stuff that it needs. And so you do that by connecting with an action hook. And I'm going to show a specific example of that as well. And then going down the page, it'll actually show you that that's for the front side of your website. But if you um, come down a little bit further, this is for the admin page. So it runs um, the same kind of a sequence, but it'll run different things. So you can actually connect to things that are happening when the dashboard of your WordPress site is um, coming up. So you can do things like when you are ready to post, when, when someone posts a new blog post, you can actually write a function to connect to that function and say, when this person posts, I want you to fire off a, a tweet at the same time. So it allows you to do a lot of customization to um, any of the core files and also um, any themes that, that have been properly um, written in order to use these. There's uh, functions have to be written in order to, uh, in, in a certain way in order to be connected to by um, an action hook or a filter hook. And then if you keep going down the page, then you're going to get into um, what each one of these functions does when it fires. So um, for example, let's say add attachment runs when an attached file is first added to the database. Let's look a little bit deeper. Uh, WP trash post runs when a post or page is about to be trashed. So all of these functions, you can kind of look through and say, hey, I want to do something. And where can I try to connect and into an action that's already be, being um, performed by WordPress? This really helps when uh, when you have everybody has um, created a child theme before, right? So you create a child theme because you don't you you still want to be able to update the the main theme but you may want to change some of the functionality. So you'll create a child theme, edit certain files, and that's, that's great. It pre prevents you from losing your work. Um, that can't always be said for plugins because you, know, you can't child a plugin at this point, unfortunately. So what you can do is if the plugin author wrote it correctly, you can look inside of his files and see where people are applying filters or that you can hook in using either uh, an action filter or um, uh, the other kind of filter. Okay. 
So anyways, you can go through all this kind of stuff. Um, one thing to notice that some of these are in red, and that means that they don't have any additional information. Um, you can actually click on some of these and it'll give you some examples and things like that. Um, but what you can do is you can uh, copy and paste one of these functions if you're interested in it. And at the top of the page, WordPress is working on a new code reference. And that's one of the links that I had in the slide. So what they're trying to do here is this doesn't really break things up and categorize them for you the way that the other one does, but it allows you to basically just go ahead and search right then and there for that function that you're looking for. Um, and, and some of the uh, some of these have more in-depth examples than uh, the other reference does. So let me go back to So I have a uh, test site, and you guys are welcome to go to it if you like. Um, the URL is advanced-meetup-waynewebdev.c9.io. And I also put another link on here to wptests.io, just kind of an aside. Um, if you really want to populate, say you're, you're building a new theme and you want to be able to test for a lot of different things, you can download um, an XML file from this WP test and upload it into your theme. And it basically covers almost everything you can think of, any kind of um, case you know, where you might be uh, you know, an image to the left, an image to the right, um, all the H tags, everything that you could a sticky post, all that kind of stuff. So um, on this example site that I have, I went ahead and populated that. There's also a plugin that I recommend called Query Monitor. And that's gonna be able to, um, you can go to different pages on your website and use the Query Monitor to see what uh, hooks are running at that time. Okay, we're frozen. Coming <laughs> back. It's a water break. Anybody need me to repeat this URL to the test site? Yay, keynote quit. <laughs> So anyways, I already have it pulled up here. And uh, unfortunately, because not everyone's logged in, you can't see this, but um, there's a bunch of little numbers up here. And this is actually the query monitor plugin. And so I can actually go down to this hook section and click on it, and it's gonna pull up a reference. So it's basically what we saw in, in the um, action reference where you see all of these different um, time, times in the timeline. And you can also see that um, different ones are for core, WordPress core, and some, like in this case, we're using Query Monitor, so it's actually connecting to this plugins underscore loaded in order to run uh, its function. And uh, what's cool about this is you can filter these so if you are looking for um, you know that your action is in core you know that it's in a certain plugin or a theme you can filter it out so that's an action filter for a query monitor right correct so you, you what you do is um, you can go to either a page or, or um, a place on your dashboard where you want to kind of find out what's running and is it something that I might want to connect to in order to create some custom functionality for my client or for selling you know, this, this theme? And so you can use this to see, okay, well, what's all running at this time? And uh, especially if you're doing plugin development, you, you can kind of filter this out so you can see what actions are being taken 
buy only your plugins and um, the best way to kind of explain what this does is if you um, if you're developing a theme for sale from public and your theme may eventually someone may purchase it and then upload um, WooCommerce to it because they want to sell something. Well, you can actually have uh, functions in your theme that control WooCommerce, even though it, there's no guarantee that someone's going to actually put WooCommerce on there. But if they do, you've already built out you know custom functionality so that it still looks like your theme. Um, that that's one perk of being able to do that. We're going to look at some. Um, little examples. This part of it is kind of the boring part. We're going to dig into the code in a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so I also have some. This is Cloud9, and I'm able to see my file structure here, and we're going to be able to do some searches and kind of see um, a couple different things. Hopefully, my. Uh, You know, I just come back up. All right. So we're actually going to be doing some searching, and these are two searches that you can pretty much do in any. Uh, WordPress installation and be able to find what you're looking for. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for an action and we're going to be looking for a filter. And again, remember that filters are filtering content. So let's say that WordPress is, um, in this case, we're going to be looking at the WP title. Now the WP title is what shows up at the top in your, um, your tab of your browser. See if we can exit this without losing it. So, for example, up here at the top, it says advanced meetup test, uh, and then you have a pipe, and then it says just another WordPress theme um, or site. Uh, so, you can actually control how that's displayed or what, what you want that to say. And since you're wanting to change, uh, the wording, you can actually filter that. And if you want to think about if there's something that's being provided to you by a theme or a plugin, as far as kind of like verbiage, um, the what what it's saying, you can filter it and make it look the way you want, or make it say what you want by doing a filter hook. If you want to add actions or functionality to uh, when, when something else is firing, then you would be using an action hook. So we're going to search for these two terms that I just brought up here. So we're going to start with the filter. We're going to be searching for add underscore filter, open parentheses, space, single quote, WP underscore title. Now, this actually has like things that are supposed to go behind it, but sometimes it's different in, in different cases, as, as you'll see when we search. Um, so you want to leave it open ended like this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a master search. And this master search is going to look through my entire structure because we're not going to be looking at themes. We're not going to be looking at plugins. Some, some results may come up for those depending on what theme or what plugins you're using. But we're going to be looking at what's in your WP includes folder, what's, what's in your WP admin, um, because that's where all of the core functionality is. So we're going to look for add underscore filter open parentheses, space, single quote, WP underscore T-I-T-L. Right. So here are my results. 
So in the WP content themes, hooks, examples, WP title.php, which is something that I have in there to show you examples, there was an ad filter um, in the 2014 theme. They're actually uh, running a filter to change what the core functionality is um, so that they can display something custom on, on their, uh, their theme. And then, um, let's see. Anyways, you can actually click on each one of these and it will double click on it and it'll take you exactly where that ad filter is being displayed in the code. In this case, this is the 2013 theme. So now what this is doing is the WordPress core fun uh, files are, there's a function that's controlling the way that the WP title is displayed. Now what Automatic did here when they created the 2013 theme is they created a filter by using this add filter that adds on uh, a filter to be able to control the functionality that the core files are doing. And what it, what it does is this first parameter here says I want to connect to the WP title. And then this next parameter is, and then I want to add on to it or I want to filter it using this function that I wrote. And this is the name of the function that they wrote in this case, 2013 underscore WP underscore title. And then this uh, first number here is the priority. And uh, most uh, priorities are set to 10 in WordPress. And the higher you go, the bigger the number is, the more precedence you'll take over someone else's. So a lot of times you'll see people will write like 999 because they wanna be able to say, I want my function to trump anyone else's functions. And then this last number is how many param parameters are being passed. So if I scroll up a little bit, <coughs> here's the actual function that uh, Automatic wrote. So there, there's two parameters, there's a title and a separator. And then all they did was they wrote some PHP in the middle to do something differently than what WordPress does on its own. Does that make sense? Now we're also going to look at how does WordPress write their functions in a way that we can connect to them. Now this is supposed to, in the search results, I was supposed to get one in the core. So now we're going to go to the second one that we have on the keynote, which was add action. And this add action is looking for the init or the initialization. So if we go back in here, we're going to do the same thing where we do We're doing add underscore action, open parentheses, space, single quote, and then we're looking for I N I T. Now this one gives me a lot more results. And I'm getting so I'm getting an add action for the Akismet plugin. The query monitor plugin, a couple times for the query monitor plugin. Uh, 2014. All right, here we go. So 
in this example right here, this is in the WP includes folder. So this is in the for the WordPress for functions. And it's going into class.wp scripts. Let's find one that makes a little sense. So here's one called WP Schedule Update Checks. And the function is connecting to the initialization and it's running this function at that time, this WP Schedule Update Checks. Um, I think the best way to understand this is getting into some simpler examples. But first we're going to talk about creating connections. So how how are WordPress uh, functions written so that we can connect to them? How do how should plugin and theme developers write their functions so that if they are selling their theme they can have other developers connect to them and, and change things. Um, and those are done by apply filters and do action. So we're going to do that same kind of search. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the action. So we're going to do a do action. I think we're sticking with commit. So we're doing do underscore action, open parentheses, space, single quote, INIT. So we're getting um, into the WP settings.php file in the four. If I double click on this do action, we can see that Looking through most of this stuff, let me find another one. Okay, so here's a do action of set up theme. So what they've done is they've created um, one of those timestamps in, in that time frame, and then they've wrapped it in this do action. And that function basically allows anyone else to connect to that action. So if they were just to write set up theme right here, then we would never be able to connect to it. So if I go down a little bit more, here's the initial uh, initialization. Um, here's the do action for after the theme is set up. Here's the initialization. Uh, here is the, I think this is the final one where it says that the WP has been loaded. Um, and we're gonna look at some really awesome examples of that too. Now we're gonna look for apply filters. And we're gonna look for apply <coughs> underscore filters. And then we're gonna open parentheses, space, single quote. And then we're gonna look for the WP underscore title. All right, so we have two examples of this. We have both in the WP includes folder, one in a file called feed.php and one in a general dash template. And let's look at, um, so notice that I was mentioning earlier that we are searching for um, this right here kind of open-ended because if you see here, we're, there's also a WP title underscore RSS and there's a WP title so we're able to see, you know, if we had to just close this, we wouldn't have been able to see this example right here. And sometimes that can be helpful if you don't really know what you're looking for, you kind of know. But I'm gonna click on this one in the general template. So I'm gonna scroll up just a little bit.
Okay, I'm gonna scroll up a lot. All right. So here's the function. This is the function that the WordPress core created in order to control the WP title. So they've given it the title of WP title, and then they show what the um, parameters that are supposed to be passed through it. And then it goes through everything like if it's a single or a home page or, or but, and not a front, um, a lot of conditionals do this. And if it's an archive page, say this instead, if it's a category page. So in this case, it may be saying, you know, um, archive and then give you the post type after that, or it may say, um, you're on a specific category, uh, archive page. So this is how WordPress handles it. And what you could do if you wanted to was change, let's say you want the title to say something differently on search pages, then you would simply uh, add a filter and do it a little bit differently. But that, that's where I kind of mentioned earlier that you really have to know quite a bit of PHP, um, or at least WordPress PHP, in order to kind of get it to do what you want. But that's where Google comes in because Google will help you. So um, then this, I don't really know what this is doing right here because it's the core um, and the core is crazy, but um, essentially what happens at the end of this is that it wraps the WP title in this apply filters function. And this apply filters function is what allows you to then connect to it. And then what it does is it sets it equal to a variable, in this case, title. And earlier I mentioned that actions are when you want to connect to an action that's happening in WordPress, you want to add your own action, you just create the function and it happens. In this case, you actually have to return something. So you would have to, um, the function at the end would have to read return and then this um, variable title. So that, because what you're doing is you're getting information, you're getting this title, what it's supposed to read, and then you're applying a filter to it. So it's gonna modify that. And then you have to then send that back to WordPress so that it displays on the front. Yeah, good with that, you have any questions so far? I'm sure you have a million questions. All right, and then um, I wanna go ahead and mention before we dive into the code, um, a couple other things. So there's a has action and a has filter, and I do have an example of this that I can show you but these are conditional statements that you would use. Um, kind of like I, what I was mentioning earlier, if you had a theme and you wanted to create some um, filters or actions to happen when someone uh, uploads WooCommerce, well, you would have to write a conditional statement around this. Um, let's say you're creating uh, a filter in order to change a certain um, line that WooCommerce spits out. Um, you would have to, you would want to say, if has filter, and then give that filter name, which you would have to go look up in, in the plugin um, documentation. If that exists, then I want you to run this. Because otherwise, if you just say, hey, run this function, and that, uh, that, t that filter doesn't actually exist, then you're gonna get an error and your site's gonna break. So it, it's kind of a way that you can say, Hey, if someone adds this plugin, you know, filter this content out, or if they upload this plugin, you know, change what this says or add an action to this. Um, so this conditional allows things uh, to not break, essentially. And then you can also do things where if you're totally unsatisfied with the way that um, WordPress has done something, you can actually remove their action and then add it back in and have it completely the way you want it. So they have at, uh, remove actions and remove filters. That's the good part. 
Can you use this to like look or outdated organs and then if they're outdated, like not you know within a certain version of WordPress, like in the sense of not allowing to use? Probably. I mean, pretty much anything can be. You know, if you can write it in PHP and then connect it where it needs to be hooked into, then you can do it. You know, if um, you could probably even write something that if uh, if a certain plugin or a certain couple plugins um, are a, like, let's say three versions behind, you could like automatically, you know, send an email out to someone, you know? So that, that can be where you can almost automate. I'm sorry. Or maybe uninstall it, or redirect. It could. Like, you know, it could. Yeah, it could. Um, it could uninstall it, or it could even. Um, I, w I would even assume that it could update the plugin on its own, mm -hmm. which probably isn't safe. But <laughs> you could write that in. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna close these searches that we did. All right, we're going to go back to the very first slide where we talked about adding an action and adding a filter. So this, see if I can see it in here. Can I read that a little bit better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, this is kind of like what your typical structure of an add action looks like. So the first variable is the hook. So we would put in WP underscore title if that's the hook that we wanted to connect to. And then the function to add is the name of the function that you wrote. And as we go through this, I guarantee you, if any of you have developed a website in WordPress before, um, you've probably used a filter or an, an action without knowing that you did. Um, because once I start showing you some examples, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I've done that before. Um, so again, uh, you're also going to see a pattern in the, the way that things are structured. Um, so the second variable is the function that you're going to add. Again, we talked about that number is the priority. Typically, you want to make sure that your, your priority is a little bit higher than 10 because 10 is the standard. Um, but you can use that query monitor plugin to find out what the priority of whatever um, you know, function that you're looking for, or action that you're looking for. Um, so you can either set it one higher or you can remove that action altogether and put in your own. And then you also uh, would put in how many um, arguments are accepted. And looking at filter, it's very similar. Um, they call this a tag. So you would be using the tag that you want to uh, filter, and then you would give the function that you wrote to alter it or modify it, and then you have the priority and the accepted arguments. All right, so let's look at an add action example and a filter example. So you guys should be familiar with this. We kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, here is the structure. You have your add action. You're connecting to the action of WP underscore on queue scripts. And then you're adding your function that, you're, that you wrote in order to connect to that action. So here's the structure that you're going to get used to. You write function, you give it a name, you open uh, curly brackets, and then you write whatever it is that you want to happen inside of here. In this case, we're um, on queuing a Google font. Instead of putting it in the head, guys, don't do this. Um, and then you want to close your curly bracket, and then make sure that you have your add action. Because um, this is actually saying, connect to this and use this function at that time. Now, I know somebody in here has done this before. Um, if you've ever had um, an excerpt, you probably wanted to change the character length of it. Um, and you probably just Google around and found something. So this is a, a, a filter. And uh, 
In this case, it's connecting to the excerpt link, which if you were to search for this, um, what would it be? It would be apply underscore filters excerpt link. You would be able to find that in the code somewhere and see what the way that WordPress is handling it. And then you would be able to run your custom function. In this case, you're giving it one parameter, a link, and you're returning out how many characters you want. Now, you remember we talked about earlier, filters have to return something. Because you're getting information, you're modifying it, and then you have to return it. So, in the add action example, all you did here was on cue this style, but there's no return because it's just something that's happening. The filter, you actually have to return the data. And then notice that the priority was set to 999. Again, some people do that. All right, let's look at apply filters and do action. So this is how WordPress would set up a function. And if, for me, I build uh, WordPress websites for clients. So I know that only it's only for one business, it's only for one client or a couple different people who are gonna log in. Um, they're not gonna be going in there and changing themes or plugins out. So, I, I wouldn't go in this direction most of the time. I wouldn't write my functions out so that then later I can connect to them because I know where they are, I can just go change them myself. But if you're doing something that is gonna be sold, or especially something that you wanna get put into the um, theme repository um, from WordPress, then you wanna make sure that you write your functions in this format so that people can then take your themes and grow them even bigger. Um, so in this case, uh, we're gonna be creating um, a function that you're gonna allow someone to filter. And so all you do is write out function, give it a name, give it any variables that need to be passed, put in your function functionality in here, um, and then make sure that you add that filter and then take this, echo out this value, and wrap that in the apply filters. And essentially what happens is if, um, in this case, this was a, an example that I found. So this default value would show up automatically every time if you were to view this page. But if you then add you connect to this um, example filter by adding a filter, connecting the example filter, and then passing in your new um, function, you can essentially have this say default value, but then it would be adding on the word new at the end of it. That was kind of an example that I found. It was kind of silly, but it was simple. So let's say in your theme you wanted to write out um, um, let's say you're on an archive page, you're on a custom post type of portfolio, and then um, your theme author created something that at the top of the page, it reads out archives, colon, and then the post type. Well, maybe for you, you don't want the word archives attached to that. So all you would do is create an add filter if they wrote this correctly. If as long as their function had the supply, uh, apply filters around it, then you could write this right here and and actually either add something to it or have it you know uh, remove something. Is that making sense? And the same goes for a do action. And this example is just giving you 
um, something with a single argument and things that have multiple arguments, you can either list them out or you can uh, create a variable of args and then set that equal to an array. And then what's inside of your array would go into those args. Excuse me. All right. Do I have any questions at this point? Anybody completely lost? Want to pull their hair off? <laughs> I saw um, a variable tag. Can you give an example of one of those? Yeah. Um, do you remember which file it was in? Uh, add something. Was, was one of them. Okay. So a tag, an example of that would be. So this is what you would have to find. So um, going back to that search, I should have looked up. So you can find it in the query monitor if you're looking for something on a certain page. Um, you know, in this case, if you were um, if you were wanting to change that WP title, then WP title would be the tag. Got it? Um, so in this case, they just write it in the form of a variable. But this is where your um, filter or your tag that you're looking for. And then you would add in the name of the function that will be filtering or that you've overridden and modified. And that's the name of your function doing whatever mm -hmm. you're So if we look back at that example, in this case, um, and we can actually find this, let's do, we're gonna look for apply underscore filters, open parentheses, space, single quote, and then we're looking for excerpt underscore link. So it happens to be in the WP includes folder in formatting.php. I can double click on this and open up that file. And you can see that there, um, Okay, so in this case, they're uh, they're doing this kind of shorthand where they're basically saying, "Here is the tag," and they're just passing in 55 characters right in there. And so all we would be doing is, since this only this is the the one parameter that it has. So if we look back at this um, example here, it uses this link variable and you're returning 20. So what it's going to do is it's going to read this function name, put that right here and return out 20. So instead of 55, it will, it will read 20 instead. All right, let's see if I have, uh, here's a has actually. All right, so if you needed to, if you wanted to write um, something for a plugin, and I'll use um, Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms um, actually has a really great documentation, and they include their own hooks. So here's some popular ones they used. Um, I'm going to search for button. So everyone's familiar with Gravity Forms, right? I'm very no, okay. It's 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 just a way that you can post um, forms on your website. Um, it, it, it's like a premium, high advanced form. Yeah. You can do so much with it. You can even have like a a hand signature. So if people can go to the website and use their finger and sign. You can deal with the gravity form, you can make application, job applications, anything you can think of. 
and it's very dynamic so like if someone answers a question it can open up a new section based on your question is, is, is that uh, applicable for enterprise level as well yeah. like the yeah. financial institution mm -hmm. so um, in this case I just kind of know what I'm looking for but um, let's say you have a form you have a gravity form built out and you have it displaying on a page well um, maybe you don't like the way that it's styled I can come and look in their documentation for this G form submit button. And that's a, a filter that I, or that's a tag that I want to filter. So it gives you all these really awesome usages. So you can see, you can do add filter, G form underscore submit underscore button, and then your function name, and then it gives you its priority 10, and it uses, it has two um, variables that are passed through. And then you can even scroll down and literally just copy and paste this right here. And you can control. So what this is doing is it's a filter, so it's returning something out, and it's returning a button with a class of button with an ID of G form, blah, 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 a span that says submit. So essentially we could grab this and say, I don't want this to say submit, I want it to say something else. And I wanna maybe use bootstrap, so I'm gonna use BTN, space btn dash primary or something like that you know um so you can control now if if you built a theme and you sold it but it, it didn't come with gravity forms but you know gravity forms is cool i may want to create something to where it's already styled out once they put it on you know put the gravity form on their page this is how you would do it so let's say we want to change the button the submit button on Gravity Forms if someone uploads it to our website, to our WordPress install. Then we would need to use this has, uh, well actually no, not has actually, we would use a has filter. So we would do a conditional statement, if has filter of, and in this case it would be that uh, G form underscore submit underscore button. If it has that, then add a filter, using that same name and then pass my custom code in. So what would happen is if they did in fact upload uh, Gravity Forms and put one on the page, you would already have control of it and you would have styled it out. Um, but if they never do that, then this function isn't firing and it's not something that's gonna be happening when it doesn't need to be happening. Does that make sense? And it works the same way with actions. So has action. In this case, it kind of go, uh, gives you an example of where, in this case, something that was going on in the initialization, I want to remove everything that's happening at in this initialization, which you don't want to do, by the way. Don't do it. Um, and then I want to add everything that I wanted to do. And so you remove everything at init, and then add your init function. That's has, and then we already kind of talked about remove action and remove filter. So we do have remove action example or remove filter example. So earlier we created um, that Google font. We enqueued that Google font using an action. In this case, you can remove the action that's connected to WP Unqueue scripts, and your function was called add Google font. You can just remove that. So let's say that um, your the theme that you're working with has a bunch of either CSS files or maybe a couple um, Google fonts that you don't want to use. Then just remove that action and then put in the action that you want, pulling in the CSS and the Google font that you'd like it to pull in. And in this case, you're removing the filter that's connected to the content. So the content is whatever you write into the editor of your uh, WordPress dashboard. So this is um, taking out the do action uh, I'm sorry, the do short code. So you wouldn't be able to put short codes into your content. So that may be 
you know, maybe your client is short code happy and they're going to go in there and put a bunch of short codes, you can actually remove that functionality. You should do it, folks. You should do it. And there's another one in here that I'm going to go over, and I'll just go ahead and do it now since we're talking about it. Removing menus. Something that you can do, um, this one isn't that advanced, but um, what this is doing is it's connecting to the admin menu action. It's adding in this um, remove menus function. And what it's doing is it's removing all of the options that are here on the side of your dashboard, on the left side. So you can select, you know, I don't want my client going into the settings. I don't want them going into the appearance. So you can hide all that kind of stuff. Now, of course, when you do it at this level, the way that this is written now, you would be hiding it from yourself as well. So you would want to write it in a way where maybe you create yourself as a super admin. So you would say, if admin is super admin, then show everything. But if it's not, if it's a regular admin, or maybe it's a subscriber or um, a contributor or whatever, they don't need to be seeing all that stuff. So it's a way that you can control that. Did you um, have that action like actually written out where you're adding uh, Google Forms? I did. Okay, mm -hmm. can I see it? Sure. Yeah. So you write out function, you give it a name, you use the WP on Q style function. And then you have to give it a name. And then uh, in this case, all you need to do is put in this URL to pull in the CSS, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, Pacifico or Pacifico. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that connects to this action. Okay, and so you can just do add underscore and then whatever you call it, and I'll know what to do. Or is that the right here? Yeah. yeah this no, it's okay. This part right here, you can literally call it whatever you want. Okay. And I'm glad that you brought that up because when I first started developing, I was like, "Well, what what do I have control over? Can I like change the name of this?" Or I'm scared. Like, should I do this? But as long as you, if you change it here, you have to make sure that you change it here too, because the, they're they're saying you know use this function that's called this. Yeah, I was just confused by um, that one parameter of the font. This one right here? So um, you can actually register <coughs> scripts, not just to unqueue them, you can register them, and then you can unqueue them only using the little title that you gave them. So you could say unqueue just um, oh, a single uh, quotes and then this Google font, and they would pull in because you have registered them with uh, in your WordPress installation. Um, so this, yes, yeah, yeah, so to answer your question, as long as this doesn't, um, it's not the same name as anything else. Like for example, uh, WordPress core comes with jQuery mm -hmm. out of the box. So you could literally just say WP on Q scripts jQuery, and it will automatically pull that in because it's in there. So you couldn't cr do this same thing mm -hmm. and add jQuery and then add in like um, a link to a CDN. You couldn't do that because there already is a jQuery in Word WordPress. So you'd have to unregister mm -hmm. WordPress jQuery and then register yours and you could call it jQuery. A little confusing. To prefix your things with something to the, you namespace it. Yeah. So what he was saying is you want to prefix any of your any of your functions, anything, because um, there are so many people out there writing functions that if you say my Google Fonts, you're bound to have someone else who used that function. And so let's say you use that function in your theme, and then somebody uploaded a plugin that used those two same names, then that would, there would be a, an error. So uh, if you uh, prefix it with, you know, your initials or maybe the 
initials of the company that you work for or something like that, that's always a, a best practice. Let's see what else. What other goodies I have in here? I don't know what this is. So here's a filter that is working in the admin instead of on the front of your website. So uh, in this case, you're able to unset the columns that you see when you let, let's say you go to uh, posts in your dashboard. That opens up all the posts that you've written and they're broken up into columns, typically showing you like category, tag, the date that they were written, all that kind of stuff. Well, if your theme or your client doesn't actually connect categories to their posts or tags or anything like that, you can unset those columns so that they don't see them. So it's not like, well, why don't any of these have categories? Well, you never gave them categories. You know, you can hide things, kind of make uh, make it seem like you tailored your theme for your client or for uh, the person that you're selling to. So this would be connecting to a tag in the core called manage post columns. And then you're running your function of manage post columns example. Let's see what this one's doing. So this is an example of how someone has taken, has filtered the WP title, which is kind of what we've been talking about all along. Um, there, there was a certain portion of it that they wanted to change. So they connected to it by adding a filter. They have this uh, as the name of their function, custom WP title. They gave it a priority of 20 instead of 10, and it's passing in two variables, which are the title and the separator. And then in this case, they're connecting to global page variable, they're adding the site name by getting uh, using a function called get underscore blog info and the name, and that will set that equal to title. And then they want to use the site description as the other side of it. So kind of like what we showed up here earlier, this says advanced meetup uh, test, and then you have a pipe, and then you have typically like whatever you wrote in for your title in your settings. Um, but you can completely customize that by, in this case, they're pulling in um, the description and they're doing some conditionals to say only do this when this and this and this is true. And then uh, they actually, again, because this is a filter, they're returning the title variable. Here's another example of on queuing. In this case, they've written them out separately. So they've written a function to show their style sheets, and then they've written a function to show their JavaScript files. So here's a little bit more um, showing like this one is using bootstrap underscore CSS, just a name that they decided to use. In this case, they wanted to use this is their main CSS file, so they uh, use that name. And the same here, Bootstrap and Theme.js. Now, you could easily do all of this stuff in one function. So this could read um, on queue styles as the function name, and you could have your on queue style and these uh, scripts down here, all of this could be added underneath the style and done in one action. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. A lot of times people will do it together just to kind of keep everything uh, in one place. And let's see. So here's, um, again, if, if anybody does, um, 
custom development. Uh, this is an example of creating um, a widget area. So if you go to widgets, typically you have like something that says like primary and you can drag your any of the widgets that you want into that area. Well, you can have multiple areas by using um, this action of connecting to the widgets in it and adding in your widget area so that it'll initialize when everything else is. And uh, it would be using this register sidebar. You can give it, um, in, in this case, they're referring to it as a sidebar, but essentially it's a widget area. Um, so you would go to widgets and you would see primary, but then you would see the one that you just created called my sidebar. But yeah, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot of information, and that's been a lot of digging into core code, which can be kind of crazy. But um, I recommend that if you really want to go further with your development, spend some time going in and seeing like what's in that WP includes folder, what's in the WP admin folder. Just kind of dig around and, and look for those things that we talked about anywhere where it says do action or apply filter because that means that there's something going on that you can actually take over control of and that can really take your development to the next level because you have a lot more control over um, the core files and it even go into um, you know automatic puts out a new theme pretty much every year um, so go into the 2015 theme 2014 theme and you'll notice that a lot of their files are like the page.php file. It's very minimal. There's not a lot of code in there, mostly HTML. And that's because they're doing all of their changes, all of their customization by up connecting to all of their filters and all their actions that they originally built. And having um, really having the HTML structure of your website and the functionality completely separated one in the functions.php file and then all of your structure in any of your template or theme files. So just kind of dig around in there. It's, it's pretty interesting what you can learn. And uh, also there's a, there's a site that I was looking at. I think it's WPC. Yeah, WPSeek.com. Um, where you can search for different functions and filters and actions. And then also just do a Google search for WordPress snippets. And nine times out of 10 code snippets or WordPress snippets are going to be, there's actually a WP dash snippets. So let's see if there's anything cool in here. Um, so you can set the featured image automatically. That's not a hook. Anyways, a lot of times when you're looking for um, snippets, they'll be in that same kind of format that you've seen where it'll either be um, an ad action or an ad filter. Um, so what, what's good now is any development that you do from now on, if there's something that you're trying to do and you're Googling around and you find something, you'll recognize those things. Oh, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm working with actions and filters. So that's it guys. You guys have any additional questions? You want to see more examples? Feel good about it? Let's see your um, company that you worked on recently that you really like that.
<laughs> yeah, actually, I just did something. Let's see if I can log in. I shouldn't be showing this to the world. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're all seeing it. Don't look. It's amazing how people are still there and watching. <clears throat> All right, so this is a gravity form right here, and I wanted to apply my own bootstrap function or classes to it. So, close this. So, inside of um, a file called extras.php, which I'm pulling into my functions folder, I'm requiring in my functions folder, um, I have this add filter g form field content so this is the tag that i was able to find on gravity forms documentation and then i wrote this excuse me bootstrap underscore styles for gravity forms fields um, gave it a priority of 10 there's it's passing five uh, parameters and then basically I'm saying like if it's the field type of um, list or if it's a, um, a text area or a checkbox or a radio button, then I want you to add um, classes that are from Bootstrap. So that's, that's one example. Um, I use that same uh, submit button, I change the submit button. Um, ah, this is one that I did. Um, kind of that example that I explained to you earlier. Um, I, a lot of times I use um, a starter theme called Roots, um, which they've recently changed to Sage. Um, but it has a, a function built into it that um, is supposed to give you better SEO titles, mm -hmm. and it was spitting out um, archives, colon, and then whatever the post site was, kind of like I mentioned earlier. So if I went up to my menu and I clicked on resources, this would say archives, colon, resources. And I didn't want that, I wanted it to be called just resources because that's what my client wants. Um, so I had to write in this, uh, this filter so if it's the post type archive, then uh, take out, yeah, right here where this little percent sign S was. In the code, it's written like this. And then this little uh, percent sign S is whatever post type it is. So this is the way that it was inside of the roots function um, and I was like no I don't want that so then I just simply rewrote it like this I took out what I didn't want and that took care of the problem and now that means that if I needed to update anything later down the road that if something changed in that function, it would change in the core, but I would be connecting to it, I'd be hooking into it, and so my function would still be take precedence over it.
All right, I'm taking that down. The world is not ready. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? This one have to ask the question again. Ask the question again. Anybody what? Anybody have any questions? <laughs> it's getting later. Everybody's hungry. They want to go home. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna put the PowerPoint presentation? So already did. Yeah, it's on the meetup. Um, the meetup. Meet yep. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Go to files. I have to go to more files and it's there. And plus, Wayne will also blog about it. His uh, oh, WP yeah. Dev Solutions. <laughs> so, yep. Um, I've been really busy, but I do try to blog at wpdevsolutions.com. Um, and the reason that I started this was because. I, uh, I did go to college for graphic design and I did learn some web development, but I fell in love with WordPress and I just kind of went head first into it and I wanted to be able to um, learn more. And so I was like Googling all over the place and I was finding things that were like in two, 2011 and 2009 and then some things in 2014 and I was like, well, how do I solve this issue? And so what I would do is if I ended up solving the issue with a bunch of random tutorials, like three tutorials, then I would try to write something currently. This is how I solved it. I hope this helps somebody. And that's that's kind of the, the way that I set up my blog. So um, anybody who's trying to learn how to develop in WordPress, check it out. I'd appreciate it. Click on all the banners because we're all trying to make money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, folks, for staying along. We appreciate it. If you want to go and ch check the replay as well for any of the notes and the links. But uh, thanks again for staying for a long time. <laughs> thank you, guys.